the warriors Changing our world day by day The way of the thrift of warriors Can't rely on the bank, there's no way Good morning, good morning, BexwearRoadDrew.com Good morning, Hornersies, your sip of chaga coffee Um, yes, keep doing your chaga, keep doing your vitamin C, even though everything's pretty much over. Um, then finally, the ridiculousness of the whole thing. We'll look back on this and, and half the country will be so embarrassed that they fell for this shit. The other half will be saying, I told you so, but no, who cares? I told I took the whole, I told you so thing. It, it, it lasts so, it's so fleeting. It's like you can be right, it's like for silver investors. One day you're going to be right. One day the price of silver, the manipulation, the suppression will be over. Boom, silver jumps over $5,000, $10,000 an ounce. And you'll say, I told you so. Well, you've been in this 20 years. They've won the argument the whole time. Silver's not doing anything. Silver. And you'll have one I told you so. And that lasts maybe a day or two. <laughs> Where's the fairness? But that day is coming, and it's coming faster and faster. It's so transparent now how they are rigging the markets. I talked to Jenny Moonstone a few months back, well, six months, a year back, and she was saying that the bad guys are going to, in the old manipulation, start a new one, but she wasn't sure if it's new or an old manipulation. And it didn't make sense to her, but it made sense to me. The old manipulation was the leasing of gold and silver to these criminal bullion banks they sell it into the market and they short it like they own it. They don't own it. They lease it. And they got to return it to the proper owner, J.P. Morgan. Um, but it also also depends on how the lease contracts are written. It's very easy for J.P. Morgan to say, okay, Bank of America, we'll lease you 800 million ounces of silver because we have 1.2 billion ounces that we stole over the last 10 years while we were suppressing the price. We'll lend it to you. And the contract might say you pay us back in the equivalent amount of gold. It could, it could say anything. Financial engineering is an amazing tool. They teach it in college. How to get around the rules and regulations, it should be called. They call it financial engineering. So, yeah, clearly the, the operation has changed, but it's the same old operation. The leasing of physical silver. It was mainly gold last time, the beginning of the 2000s. It all fell apart. Companies lost billions and billions of dollars. Barrick basically had to restructure. Barrick was a criminal money laundering, gold laundering front anyway. Uh, what was going on with Barrick Gold with all like the Bushes and, and senior, uh, senior military people on the board of directors. Uh, what they were doing is they were laundering um, gold from Yamashita's gold. That's the gold in the Philippines that was found 300,000 <clears> tons of it. Plus, way over 300,000 tons. 300,000 tons, it's, it was way over that. Um, but that, was, that wasn't even the big amount of gold. There's gold everywhere. Listen to the Cliff High interview. Listen to Big Weir's analysis. Go to RoadToRuda.com. Watch the, the videos, the introduction to the Road to Ruta right on the front page. And you'll understand just how much we've been lied to. You know, if they can lie to us about, you know, what's going on with the jab and all that stuff, you know, what's going on with politics and the voting, and they lie to us about everything. Why do gold bugs think they're lying, don't think they're lying to us about the amount of gold available in the world? 200,000 tons is supposedly the number that they've been saying for Jeffrey Christian has been uh, spreading. That was his job. Goldman Sachs paid him to start CPM Group and, and spread these lies like there's only 200,000 tons of gold. There's millions of tons of gold, my friend. I know gold bugs hate to hear that. But th the interesting thing is, over the last, say, three or four years, a lot of my gold bug friends have turned into silver bugs. They, they, they all of a sudden understand that silver has been suppressed. It's easier to see. And it's half of its all-time highs, two times all-time highs, 2,000. Um, 11 and back to 1980. How much money? How many derivatives have been created since 1980? Silver should be fifty, hundred thousand dollars $100,000 per ounce. Per ounce. It's not silver that has the problem. It's the fiat dollar and the derivatives on fiat dollars. By the way, we hit $30 trillion in debt. Um, that's the debt we report. There's, there's so many 
so many trillions, quadrillions of, of dollars that are created. It's what Ruta wrote in the sand. Create money to infinity, soaking up all the benefits of unbacked fiat money. Pretend you got everything under control. In the meantime, buy all the assets you can buy. Build all the houses you can build. Strengthen your military. All kinds of things. China's basically doing it. We, we had already done it, and we let China run with it. China's built vast ghost cities all over China. And it wasn't a waste of money. The money was the, was the issue. The money, unbacked fiat money that can be created, not even paper. You don't even have, need paper and ink anymore. Electronic blips. The invention of computers was the most hyperinflationary invention in human history. The invention of computers, I'd say, and derivatives. Derivatives are another form of money. And that's, I, you know, they keep saying two quadrillion, but they've been saying that for 10 years. I would say it's probably four or eight quadrillion now. Why even, why even throw a number on how much is being created in the background? We already know the Federal Reserve, the U.S. Treasury, they create infinity money. There is nothing they can't afford ever. And then they tell us, oh, my goodness, we hit $30 trillion. $8 trillion of that has been since the, the pandemic hit. Blame something. Blame the pandemic where they decided to shut down business. The lefties decided... Hey, this is our chance. Let's shut down every business we can, every small business, get just the big corporations, then we'll go after the corporations and people will own nothing and the government will control everything. We kind of fell for it. A lot of people saying, you know, in Canada, finally, Canada's busting out. The U.S. has still had its <clears throat> freedoms to a point. You know, the minute they started talking about mandated lockdowns and shots and all that, the U.S. started to perk up, hey, not in my country, not in my country. And the idiotic lefties who have no idea what they're talking about or are so corrupt that they know what they're doing or are paid by the corrupt people, the George Soros. Uh, how many people are on the George Soros dole? BLM, um, CRT, the critical race theory, all that shit is falling apart now. So hang on tight. <clears throat> um those asking, when's it going to happen, Mix? When's it going to happen? I'd say it's happening right now. You're in the middle of it. The fog of war, as Cliff I calls it. You know, five years from now, you'll go back to this point in time and say, oh my God, it was all happening around me. I just didn't see it. Well, it depends where you are. If you had to shut down your business, your, your small restaurant, because of the ridiculous mandates, you're in it. You're in it. Now you're struggling to figure out what you're going to do next. I don't know anybody who's looking to open a restaurant anymore. Most people are trying to figure out how much money they can get from the government to survive. And with the government handing out free money to everybody, who wants to work? Unemployment's through the roof, like real unemployment, not, not the government numbers. Real unemployment's through the roof. Real inflation is through the roof. Who would put any money in a bank that pays less than 1% interest when inflation, even official inflation, is 7%? That means you're automatically losing 6% of your purchasing power. It is insane. <clears throat> and it's all going to fall apart. So what I advise people to do in investing, not that I'm an investing I'm an advisor, this is not advice. I'll tell people what I do. I buy physical silver in my own possession. I used to own gold, absolutely. Until I understood that silver is like gold on steroids. And if you love gold... Bravo to you. You want more of that stuff? I can get you. I can tell you how to get 80 times the amount of gold you have right now. All you got to do is sell your gold, buy silver, and then when the true fair market value of silver comes out in a relationship like what it's worth, there's 6 billion ounces of gold above ground, there's 6 billion ounces of silver above ground. That's a one-to-one -one ratio. I don't care what the comic says. When that is realized, then you sell your silver back for gold and you have 80 times the amount of gold that you had. 80 times. The ratio right now is 80 to 1. I know it sounds crazy, but it's not. That's what manipulated markets offer you the opportunity. If you can see through the fog, if you can take the risk of buying silver at $22, that's when it really pays off. And we are nearing the end of the manipulation the reason they're not letting it go is because silver is the number one killer of banks. When silver goes, it all goes. 
And silver is absolutely necessary for everybody uses silver every day. If you have a smartphone, you use silver. If you have a flat screen TV, you use silver. If you have an electric car, you use silver. If you get any of your electrical power from the grid, it uses silver. <clears throat> Remember, silver is the best conductor of electricity. And there are secret things about silver that they don't tell you. Uh, perpetual energy machines are coming and they will have lots of silver in them. I can't tell you when or how it would work. I've always been interested in the magnetic energy. You know, you got two opposing forces. Why not just make a magnetic engine that just spins, you know, spins around perpetually forever? People are doing it, but every time it gets perfected, what happens? The government comes in and big corporations take that invention and they do what they did with the EV1. Remember the EV1 electric car in the 1970s, I think? The problem was it, it never needed maintenance, so they wouldn't make any money on maintenance. So they crushed the car. They took they they only they didn't sell it. They put it out on lease. Everybody wanted to buy it. They wouldn't sell it. So they crushed all the cars because it was destroying themselves. The car companies. I think it was, was it GM? There's a good documentary on who killed the electric car. Um, everybody wanted to buy their cars. They loved them, but the the Car companies weren't making any money on maintenance. The fuel companies weren't making any money. Bad, bad, bad. It just That's the insanity we live in, and that's what's breaking free. News today, Facebook shares plummet 23% after reporting weak guidance. Facebook has always been a joke. Way overvalued, massively overvalued. And now that people barely use, I don't know anybody who uses Facebook anymore. Once in a while, an old person will still use Facebook. Very few people use Facebook anymore. People are tired of it. That's why they tried to, to pivot to meta. But now they're learning that meta doesn't make any money. The virtual world, you're not going to make money right away. It's not something you can exploit like that. Everybody will go on, but nobody wants to spend money yet in the metaverse. And you know, the NFTs, there's going to be a lot of disappointed people when NFTs start crashing. Yeah, they'll, they'll be worth something, but inflated numbers are the way things go. So, yeah, I mean, in, NFTs, I think, are more valuable for, for actual ownership type of stuff and the music business, obviously. Uh, collectibles, yeah, but collectibles are only based on what someone else will pay for it, but so is everything, you know? So, I, it, you know, the metaverse, I get it, kind of, um, but you'll have a lot of people who just don't even care. And then when the metaverse people all run out of the money they're using to pay back and forth to themselves, kind of like cryptos, most cryptos are not bought with cash. They're bought with, you know, Bitcoin to buy Ethereum, Ethereum to buy Theta, Theta to buy T-Drop. And cryptos being passed back and forth, that's what makes the market. And then Tether being created out of thin air. I don't think Tether's a, that big a deal. It's not a, a huge driver on price and value. It's a huge driver on people who are trying to game the market, absolutely. Absolutely. They'll dump it all into the fake tether. People think tether is worth a dollar, so they'll, you know, it's it's a it's a mind game they're playing with you. It's a confidence game. When the confidence in tether is gone, then people won't buy tether. They won't put their money into tether. Or even if they, not many people put money into tether, they'll put like Bitcoin into tether and then try to jump back into Bitcoin. Yes, tether is a fraud. Tether is run by the crypto cabal, as I call them. Um... We all know who they are if you've watched Road to Ruta enough. But at the end of the day, even if all money was gone, the next trade of Bitcoin sets the price. Whatever that price may be. You can have all cryptos implode to zero. And then the, if, if the exchanges are still open, the next trade will be the market value of whatever that crypto trades for. So one Bitcoin might be extremely valuable in that kind of market because there's no exchange to get your Bitcoin. And I think all the exchanges will shut down when the banks shut down. Obviously, they will. And what are the owners, the, the people who possess the cryptos that are in the exchanges? They're just going to run away. They're just going to run away. Say, Hi, I got mine. Too bad for you. Kind of like uh, Mt. Gox. Mt. Gox was not a hack. I keep screaming at people. It wasn't a hack. They just traded a hell of a lot more Bitcoin than they said 
they had. And they had their, it was a fractional reserve system. And when people started pulling out their Bitcoin, knowing it's a fractional reserve system, they didn't have the Bitcoin to give to people, so they declared it was a hack. You're going to see that happen to all exchanges. Do not keep your cryptos in any exchange. And then at, at the end of the day, when shit gets cleaned up and there's no more tether and criminality starts running away because the regulators are actually doing their job, maybe, then we're going to see free fair market value trading of silver, of gold, of cryptos. And if it trades in U.S. dollars, it'll be massive. But I don't even think it'll trade in U.S. dollars. You're not going to care about having U.S. dollars in the future once you understand they, they create quadrillions of them every day if they wanted to. It's infinity money time. All right. <clears throat> Great uh, analysis of the Facebook debacle. $200 billion wiped out. A stunned Wall Street response to Facebook's record $200 billion wipeout. Facebook, or Meta, now that it is in, in the witness protection program, is making, rec making record after dismal record this morning after its catastrophic earnings and guidance last night. Not only is the company's 22% drop the biggest in stock market history, but according to Bloomberg, the one-day crash ranks as the worst stock market, the worst in stock market history. The Facebook crash has erased some $195 billion of its market cap. Do you think people withdrew $195 billion? No. It's just whatever the next trade goes for. That's the thing about market cap. Bitcoin can have a $1 trillion market cap that could go away the next day or could double the next day depending on what the next increment of trade goes for. Market cap is just the last trade times the total float, the total amount of shares out there, the total amount of Bitcoin out there. That's what a market cap is. People think, oh my God, you know, one trillion dollars of Bitcoin market cap. And you're like, it doesn't mean a trillion went into it. It means the last trade went for X amount times the total float. Same with Facebook. $195 billion did not come out of Facebook. The next trade that happened after this dismal report, it just traded for a lot lower. And you take that one, yes, people can't withdraw $195 billion because, but it was never there. It was never there until you pull it out. It's not there. But hey, if you own a share of Facebook and it's in your own possession, who knows what that'll be worth? I don't even think the uh, brokerage houses allow you to do that anymore because they fake it too. There's so many more Facebook shares out there than they actually put out there. Two or three times as many are traded. Just look at the volumes on a daily basis. How many days does it take to go through Facebook's entire market cap and say, oh my God, everybody has it in their 401k, but you know, I didn't trade it. Did you trade it? No. Well, who's trading it? And why is it traded? It's not. It's all virtual now. The metaverse is actually the reality we live it's in uh, on the stock market. <laughs> metaverse. Give me a break. Anyway, yeah, meta, meta, meta. We'll see how that goes. I think it'll be a long time before actual value is, is gotten from it. It is the wave of the future, yeah. But it'll be years, maybe decades before value, a true value, can be established for what's in the metaverse. Uh, so T-Drop. Let's talk about T-Drop. Speaking of metaverse, T-Drop is the... Reward, T-Drop is the token for the metaverse in Theta. Um, the drop happened yesterday. You got a little over two for one for every Theta that you had staked, if you'd been staked since August 1st of last year. Um, yeah, it's great getting drop tokens. An interesting concept that not many people think about. And I saw this in, uh, in the crypto news. A win for crypto stakers, IRS says untraded tokens are tax-free. So here's the way that like miners get taxed. As soon as they create something, uh, they create a Bitcoin, they're taxed. But this ruling, people are going to say, oh, good, I can, I can stake anything and not be taxed on it when, it when it gets into my own possession. That's not what they're saying. They're saying that proof of stake where the stake is created from had that, that work not been done, it, like a, a baker selling pies, when they bake the pie and you have a pie, that is not a taxable event. It's only when you sell the pie. So with Bitcoin, when you, when you mine Bitcoin, it's kind of the same thing. That, 
that Bitcoin is being created right then. But then again, it gets to, okay, there will only be 21 million ever created of Bitcoin. It gets really complicated. This is why we need to just get rid of the IRS, truthfully. Um, but yeah, they're, they lost a case where someone said, hey, I'm mining Tezos. I create, I'm creating Tezos as I do that mining. So that is not a taxable event. It's only when I sell what I mined, that would be a taxable event. So what does that mean for proof of state, proof of work? It gets really complicated. And what about drops? Like theta drop, is that taxable? And according to IRS rules, yeah, it's taxable when you get the drop. Unless you can argue that you were the one that created the drop, which you did, really. You were mining it since, or, or you created the value since August 1st. You see, it gets really squirrely. And this is not tax advice. Talk to your crypto tax attorney if you want tax advice. But you can make a case, just like this case was made, that the Tezos would not have been there, or would not have been in your wallet had you not done the work to create it. Can you make that argument with a drop? I don't know. It's, it's, they'll argue it's, a, it's a, a gifted thing of value that you have to pay tax on when you are given that thing of value. But you weren't given. You had to stake, you had to create, you had to put the effort in to create it. I, it's, it's tough. It's tough, and the IRS is going to come down on everybody. My advice, keep your cryptos in your retirement fund, self-directed retirement fund, in a secure wallet. And that gets complicated, too. <laughs> it's just so, the ridiculousness of the IRS and the government being involved in human activity is, is what is going to end. And remember, IRS goes away if there's a banking collapse. The U.S. government goes away if there's a banking collapse. They just go away. They will not be there anymore. They won't be the deciders. And they are so goddamn corrupt. The IRS is such a political entity. And we've seen it time and time again. So I'm not going to tell you what to do. I don't even know what to do, truthfully. But Theta Drop, uh, CoinMarketCap has posted it, it, although there's no trading yet on it. Um, I heard it's going for like 5 to 1, 2 T-Fuels. And you can get it on, uh, what was it called? It's a, a, one of the swaps. But if you want to get uh, some more drop, they're giving it away every quarter for those who stake um, on the Guardian node. Theta staked on the Guardian node, you're going to get T-Drop. It's going to get dropped right into your wallet. That's enough. All right. Uh, as far as you know, interesting thing, a lot of people say, Bix, Bix, don't stake your, your T-Drop. Use it for <clears throat> your VIP tiers in Theta Drop which means you basically, you have X amount of T-drop in your account and you get levels of access to NFTs. A lot of people are doing it. A lot of people are actually going out and buying T-drop just so they can level up. They want to get to the gold, which is 10 million T-drops. 10 million T-drops and you get gold, you get early access to this NFT stuff. So some NFTs. And a lot of people into NFTs are going to, wow, early access means you get like the winner every time. Like buying yourself a winning lottery ticket. <laughs> I don't know. I, you know. For me, I'm not worried about VIP tiers because I'm not that big into um, NFTs. But what it is also doing is taking T-Drop out of the market, which I like because right now, I think it's about you make 120% on the T-Drop that you stake. Those are the numbers that I'm hearing. I don't know exactly, but you're going to get a lot more T-Drop if you just stake it. It's hard to see, too. You have to basically open your wallet to see it. It won't show it on the Explorer. It'll just show you how much you um, you staked. But it's really easy to stake, and I hear you can get it out right away. I haven't tried to do that. It's early. It's a day old. It's a baby. Uh, but a lot of people trying to get to that gold or silver tea drop. Uh, silver is a million tea drop, and the gold tier is 10 million tea drop if you're rich. But I also hear that Binance has not, Binance has not staked anything. Um, they're going to probably use it to, for liquidity because Binance is the largest holder of Theta and Theta Fuel. They're, and they're the largest uh, validator node. So keep that in mind. And they'll add liquidity, but you know, 
they'll add market rigging too. <laughs> I don't know. My guess is it will um, come out like four to five to one to T drop or to not to T fuel. And right now T fuel is like 20 to one with theta. But theta, you get these gifts. So who knows who the hell knows? All right. Uh, go to roadtoroad.com. Make sure you listen to the Cliff High interview. Cliff put a new one out on BitChute. Uh, go to Cliff underscore high on BitChute, and you're going to see some real cool stuff with Cliff. But uh, as far as Cliff High on the fate of silver and humanity, go to roadtoroad.com. It's right at the top there. And then my latest video, and then these two videos here are a an explanation of the road to Ruta theory and the cryptos and why I think it's so important to understand that. And then a full discussion on C60 with the conspiracy stuff that I wasn't allowed to put on you on YouTube uh, with Ken Swartz, the owner and founder of Pur C uh, Purple Power C60. Um, great C60. If you don't know about C60 and you want to clean your body of all the shit they're putting in the air and in your veins and shit like that, go check that out. All right. That's all I got. Oh, also, Roadshow. We go on the road in about a month. About a month. The dates are March 5th, 9th, 12th, 16th, 19th, and March 26th is the last show. Sonoma, Santa Barbara, Los Angeles, San Diego, Phoenix, Albuquerque. Come hang out with us. Those of you who've been to shows know it's just a bunch of like-minded people talking about freedom, talking about cryptos, talking about silver, 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 and singing songs and having fun. So come check it out. You can buy your tickets right there under the roadshow. And say you want to go to Sonoma on March 5th, we will be playing at the Real and Brown brand, Real and Brown brand in Sonoma. Um, I've been to the place. It's really cool. Indoor, outdoor place. Uh, lots of fun. Tickets are 25 bucks to pre-order. 40 bucks at the door. It's worth it. Come check it out. The Traveling Roadshow. Come join us in our fight for freedom. This is Bix Weir, RoadToRoad.com. Mm -hmm.